Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Osman reporting from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the premier university of African scholarship. And in this lecture, we look at a single huge example. Okay, so in previous lectures you have been building up your knowledge of degree of freedom tables, um, performing balances on non-reacting as well as reacting systems, treating subsidiary relations such as conversion and fractional yield, as well as looking at reaction independence. And today in this relatively simple but tedious example, we will put all of that knowledge to use. So let's get straight to it. Okay, now finally we can put all of our knowledge together and see how we can solve an elaborate example. Okay, as you know, processes can be very complicated with many units, even over a dozen units, uh, including um, separators, reactors, splitters, mixers, condensers. So, the whole purpose of studying our material and energy balances is so that we can be able to solve entire processes, if need be. Okay, so... Let's look at a degree of freedom analysis for multi-unit systems and involving multiple reactions. Okay, so this is a highly tedious process. However, with our knowledge, we can greatly reduce the computation time and make things very easy for ourselves. Okay, so the extension of the single unit analysis to multi-unit processes is straightforward. And this is what the following example will illustrate. Some complications may arise in calculating the degree of freedom and in deducing a strategy of solution for multi-unit processes. And this will be discussed later. Okay, so let's look at an example. The gaseous reduction of magnetite with hydrogen is industrially carried out in a two-stage countercurrent system with a recycle. Okay, and here is our process. We have a two-stage system, so two reactors and condensation as well as a recycle. Okay, so we have a splitter and ultimately a mixer. And we are reacting our magnetite, that is Fe3O4. And our ultimate product is iron. Okay. A two-stage reaction occurs. Okay, so that's our reaction one and reaction two. So it requires two reactions to get to our actual product, Fe or iron. For this particular example, as you can see, there have been some compositions given. Stream two, the composition of iron is given, as well as stream 11. Stream nine, we have a composition, as well as stream one. Okay, and some additional process specifications. 10% of the gas leaving reactor 1 is purged. Okay, in other words, they are giving us the, the split ratio. Okay, a few other things. Okay, so this is it expressed uh, mathematically, our N5. N5 to N6 is equal to 0.1. Okay, another ratio they are giving us is that the gas fed to reactor 2 over the product from, re from reactor 2 is equal to 10 is to 1. Okay, so gas fed to reactor 2, this, this is reactor 2, and this is the gas fed, so that's N2, and the product from reactor 2. Okay, so that's our product there. Okay, so that's 10 is to 1. Sorry, no, wait. This is... Um... Okay, so it means that this is our gas fed to our reactor. And this is our product. So in other words, N11 over N1 is equal to 10. Okay, and another consideration worth noticing is that 
stream 2 contains no FE3 or 4. Okay, so we have FE3 or 4 coming in, none of it coming out. So we can assume 100% conversion in reactor 1. And also we can assume that since we have no FE3 or 4 coming into reactor 2, then only the second reaction will be possible. So only the second reaction will occur in reactor 2. Okay, however, both reactions will of course occur in reactor 1. So we, our degree of freedom analysis will account for this, will have to account for this. So in reactor 1, we will have two reactions expressed as R1 and R2. And we will have another rate of reaction for the second reaction in reactor 2. Now let's look at a degree of freedom analysis. Okay, you'll have to bear with me with these titles. It kind of got cut off here. So I have my mixer, reactor two, reactor one. Okay, the R was supposed to be on top here. I have my splitter, condenser, the process, as well as overall. Okay, so that's accounting for every um, unit expressed in this diagram. So let's look at our degree of freedom analysis. Okay, we have our standard number of independent variables, balances, specified compositions and flows, subsidiary relations, these will include our splitter restriction, our split ratio, which is also known as the purge fraction in this particular example, and also the gas product ratio, okay, N11 is to N1, okay, so that's a 10 is to 1. Okay, so let's populate this degree of freedom table and then we can determine a strategy of solving for all of our unknowns all of our compositions and flow rates in every stream okay that is our ultimate goal okay so for our mixer here's our mixer regarding the number of variables we have three six seven eight nine okay so that's nine there in terms of our balances we have a maximum of three different components associated with the mixer so that will be three in terms of our specified compositions we have one two and three no specified flow at this point and no applicable subsidiary relations. Okay, so calculating our degree of freedom, that will be 9 minus 3 minus 3. And that's equal to, sorry, that's equal to 3. Okay, if we look at reactor 2, over here so counting our number of independent variables we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and remember one reaction is occurring so that will be ten plus one We have a maximum of five different components, so that will be five balances, component balances. There are four composition specifications, no flow specifications. OK, 
okay our splitter restriction doesn't apply neither does our purge however we have a gas product ratio associated with reactor 2 and if we do the calculation that's 11 minus 5 minus 4 minus 1 so that's a degree of freedom of 1 Yes, another, another issue that uh, we should have looked at initially is that in our problem statement or our specifications you would have noticed that no flow rate was given at all so we can expect that we would probably have to introduce a basis however there are so many different streams here at this point we cannot really determine where to put the basis that would make it convenient for our calculation. Another issue that we needed to examine before starting our degree of freedom table is the number of independent reactions. And a quick look here and we, and we note that for our production of iron, we have two reactions and we cannot really obtain iron with simply reaction one. Okay, so therefore we can simply deduce that both of our reactions are independent. Okay, but at the moment that's no issue for this particular example. It's relatively simple regarding the number of reactions. So let's count for reactor 1. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 stream variables plus two independent reactions so that's nine plus two we have six components associated with this reactor so that's six balances there we have one specified composition no flow of course and no subsidiary relations okay and that gives us a degree of freedom of 11 minus 6 minus 1 so that's 4 now let's look at our splitter okay we can easily determine there are nine variables of course uh, three balances there have been no specified flows or compositions. However, we do have a splitter restriction. Okay, so we have three components splitting into two streams. So 3 minus 1 is 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1, which is 1. So 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. So our splitter restriction is 2. Okay, we are also given a split ratio, which accounts for 1, and this relation does not apply. So 9 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1, so we still have a degree of freedom of 3. Let's look at our condenser. Now in a previous example, we had a total condenser that simply condensed the entire stream from gas to liquid and so it didn't really have any role in the material balance however in this case we have a partial condenser where we have a gas stream coming in and we have a recovery of water so therefore our condenser does act as a separation unit and we need to account for this that is why we are including it in our degree of freedom table as you can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so that's 7 stream variables note that even though stream 6 and 7 are not uh, they haven't told us what the components are in these streams note that we have a splitter so whatever is in stream 5 
you will have these same components in stream 6 and 7 as well. Okay, so just watch out for that. We have a maximum of three components associated with the condenser. Okay, there is one specified composition. No flow, of course. And no subsidiary relations. Okay, so that gives me a degree of freedom of 7 minus 3 minus 1. A degree of freedom of 3. So now let's look at our process. That's counting everything, all of our variables. Okay, this will be quite a task. So let's start. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And we of course have three reactions occurring in our entire process so that will be 27 plus 3 okay in terms of our number of independent balances we simply add all of these together that amounts to 20 by looking at this again we have 1 2 3 4 5 specified compositions and of course no flow and we have to include all of our subsidiary relations and this gives us a degree of freedom of 1 okay so that's 30 minus 20 minus 5 minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 so that's a degree of freedom of 1 now let's look at our overall Okay, our overall balance will take into account streams 1, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So let's look at that. We have three components here. Plus 1, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so that's 10 overall. However, we have a maximum of two reactions occurring. Remember that with our overall balance, we simply count the number of different reactions that occur in, in our process. It doesn't matter that one reaction is occurring in two different reactors. We, ha we have a maximum of two react reactions and that's it for the overall. Okay, so that gives us 10 plus 2. There are a maximum of 6 components. So we have 6 balances. We have one specified composition. Again, no flow. And no subsidiary relations that are relevant. So we have a degree of freedom of 12 minus 6 minus 1 so that's 5 okay so let's look at our degree of freedom okay note that currently our process is not specified it's under specified we need one more piece of information however no flow rate was given at any point in the example so we did expect, we did anticipate that we will need to put in a basis. And as you can see, comparing all of these degree of freedoms, it is only in reactor 2 that if we put a basis, the degree of freedom will become 0 and, the react, and reactor 2 will become fully specified. So the best choice would be to add a basis at reactor 2. Ok, 
Okay, so adding a basis of perhaps a thousand moles per hour for N11 and I am choosing to put the basis specifically here because our stream is the most specified in terms of composition. Okay, so I did have the option of putting our basis in stream 2, 3 or 1 and ultimately we would be able to solve everything regardless. However, it is the most convenient to put a basis in a stream that is most specified in terms of composition. So I'm setting N11 to be 1000. And now it's simply a case of writing out our balances and trying to solve for all of the unknowns. Okay, to look at our nitrogen balance. Okay, we have an input into the reactor and that's equal to the output because nitrogen is inert in this case. So that's uh, relatively simple. In terms of hydrogen, we have an input of 0.33 times 1000 and it's being used up in reaction 2 here with the stoichiometry of 1. Okay, so that's it over there. And that's equal to our output. And the same with water, iron and iron oxide. Okay, so we have an input 0 0.01 times 1000 and water is being produced in our reaction to give our output. Iron is also being produced to give our output. However, iron oxide is being used up to give our output. And we also have a subsidiary relation to give us an extra piece of information. And we can ultimately solve this balance, these balances simultaneously by adding equations E4 and E5, in other words, these equations here, in order to solve for N2 and our R2. Okay, and the rest is pretty much straightforward. And that is ultimately our reactor 2 balances solved. And note that once we are done with reactor 2, okay, if we go back to our diagram, once we're done with reactor 2, note that all of these compositions and flows become specified for reactor 1. So we can now look at reactor 1. Okay, reactor 1 previously had a degree of freedom of 4. Okay, it was definitely not solvable initially, but now we have um, two extra flows that are specified as well as uh, three compositions. Okay, so it is very well specified now, so we can move on to, react to reactor one. And these are our balances. Okay, nitrogen is inert once again. Hydrogen is being used up in reactor in reaction 1 and 2. So we have an input of 234 calculated from our reactor 2 balance. And it's being used up by re reaction 1 and 2 with a stoichiometry of 1. Therefore we have minus R1 minus R2 to give our output. Okay, and the same for water iron iron oxide and the magnetite okay and um, the solution can be solved simultaneously as well as uh, sequentially so we can look at using equation 9 R2 is immediately solvable Thereafter, we can get R1. 
we can get N4 thereafter N5 of uh, hydrogen and N5 of water okay and this is explained here and once we have solved reactor 1 balances the flow rates of all three of these components become specified. Remember that our splitter had a degree of freedom of 3 and now we have three extra specifications, the number of flow specifications, we have three now, so our degree of freedom will become 0. So now we can solve our splitter. Remember there's no reactions occurring here, it's simply input is equal to output. And we have, we were given a split ratio. Okay, these were our splitter conditions and we were given a split ratio of N6 over N5 to be 0.1. 10% of the gas was purged as was stated in the example or in the problem statement and from there using our subsidiary relation we can solve for each of our component flows okay to get N5, N6 as well as N7 sorry N5 was already given it became specified once we solved for the reactor 1 balances. Okay, and this is simply plugging into our split ratio equations to ultimately get our compositions. Okay, now the calculation looks a bit tedious because we have separated our flows from our compositions. However, if we simply look at balancing our flow rates, we can solve the splitter quite easily. Okay, so this is for each for the water, for the hydrogen, as well as nitrogen. Okay, and these are our values ultimately. Okay, and this is simply more explanation of, on, on our splitter. Okay, we've already been through handling a splitter, the balances around a splitter. See, so we can actually solve the total balance with the purge condition and we can quite easily obtain our compositions. And now once we've solved our splitter, stream 7 becomes completely specified. We know everything about stream 7, the flow of each component. Therefore we can, if we have to check our condenser, degree of freedom, that's our condenser. It once had a degree of freedom of 3. Now we have our three specifications, so our degree of freedom will become zero. Okay, and proceeding with our material balance on our condenser, input is simply equal to output. So in each case, there's our input and that's equal to N9 of nitrogen, and the same for hydrogen. Remember water is being split up, most of our water is being removed through stream 8, however we also have water in stream 9. So N8 as well as the water in stream 9 needs to be solved for.
Okay, so just simply manipulating the balances and we can solve for stream 8 and stream 9. And lastly, we have the mixer, okay, which had a degree of freedom of 3. However, through solving the condenser, we have three specifications, so we can write out our balances and ultimately solve them. Okay, that's simple algebra. Okay, so just a final note, after the completion of the splitter balances, both the condenser and the overall balances had a degree of freedom of zero. In this particular example, we chose to go for the condenser balances. However, we could have also went for the overall balances. But since um, the overall balance has a certain degree of uh, difficulty, it often puts us in a precarious situation, so we would prefer to work with our unit balances individually. Okay, and this is just some note on the overall balances where the iron oxide balance turns out to be dependent and the solution becomes impossible with the overall balance. Okay, so in general overall material balances written for individual components can be dependent even though those written for all individual units of the systems are not. Okay, so the above complication of redundancy can potentially but not always arise wherever overall balances are introduced into the sol solution strategy. Okay, so if we had to choose between solving a unit balance or the overall balance, then it would be a better idea to choose a unit balance. However, there are times when the degree of freedom is zero only for the overall balance and the overall balance becomes the de facto choice for solving or beginning to solve the problem. Okay, and this is the example solved. Okay, so we have every flow rate of, ev of each component in every stream. And that is what our intention is. Okay, as you may have realized, this problem was a very tedious problem. And this is ultimately, and this is often the, the way these problems can become. Okay, especially when we have many uh, different units, many separators, many reactors with multiple reactions. It can actually get a lot more complicated than this. Okay, but once you realize and once you can have a good understanding of all of the theory and, and how to write out balances in principle, in practice, um, using um, simple software such as Excel or MATLAB, we can actually write out our balances and solve all of our computations quite easily. However, it is of course necessary to have this knowledge in order to be able to plug it into Excel and solve. I hope you enjoyed that example and this is a perfect illustrative example to show you how to go about a material balance problem. Remember, we start off by checking the independence of our reactions in our reactors. And once we know what our what reactions are independent, how many independent reactions we have, then we can commence with drawing up a degree of freedom table for each of our units. And thereafter, we can analyze our degree of freedom and look at a convenient place to start our material balancing and also if a basis is needed then we can look at a suitable spot to apply a basis. Okay, and so once we've done that, solving the material balances is relatively trivial. It's just a routine um, form of balancing. We apply the same equation over and over. Output is equal to input plus the summation of VIR, okay, our stoichiometry times our reaction rate and we solve either sequentially or simultaneously. Okay, so the main thing to be 
wary of is your accuracy and your understanding of the problem your interpretation of your subsidiary relations sometimes it, it, it can be quite difficult to interpret mathematically so but once you've done with all of that then the actual solution is quite simple okay so we shall apply all of these technique well this current technique and we shall keep expanding our knowledge and looking at significantly more difficult well subsequently more difficult problems